Hi, my name is Jules, and this is a Gormby Pupper. So, hi guys, welcome to Vegan Quirks, where we talk about minimalism, veganism, being an expat in China, and um, environmentalism and animal welfare. So, if you're new here, you may have not seen in some of my past videos that I kind of on and off have varying, like, animals just running around my apartment. And this video is not about those animals, but I'm hoping my next video will be. Um, today we're going to actually be talking about my experience um, working for an animal shelter, well, volunteering at an animal shelter in Shenzhen. So first, a little bit of background about um, what I know about this animal shelter. It's fairly new. It is part of the Karuna rescue team, so um, ooh, totally not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So Karuna is a um, rescue team in Shenzhen. Um, they originally just were like a rescue team that helped, um, you know, uh, rehome animals, uh, you know, be, they were like my place to find foster babies, uh, one of the places that I did at least. And they recently opened their own shelter. And recently there have been a lot of like stressful moments where uh, trying to fundraise has been really important. And so one of the things I do for this shelter is that I do donate money when possible. Um, and so I'm just going to put this out there now that if this is something that you're interested in um, learning more about this organization uh, or potentially donating to the organization that helps lots of uh, puppies and kittens in need, uh, then check my description below. I have some information um, either via WeChat or via PayPal. You can... Um, or you can find them on Instagram that you can donate through any of those uh, avenues. So getting on to kind of what I do with the shelter, uh, it's a dog shelter that's like up north in my city, like in Shenzhen, so I, I take a bit of travel to get there and then I go there and I help out uh, about once a week for a couple hours. So it's really not a big time commitment for me, but it's like about half a day on my weekends basically. Um, so the reasons why I volunteer are that, first of all, um, like I said, this is a brand new shelter, they're still getting off their feet, and that means that they really, like, they have a staff member, they, they have one person that, um, is always at, is almost always at the shelter, and then the two of them that own the shelter are, like, in and out as often as physically possible, but they also have other jobs because that's the only way they can fund the shelter, again, besides do donations. Um, and so that means that if, like, let's say some of the dogs right now are in the process of getting moved, some of them have been adopted but are not yet going to their homes yet, so they're just staying at the shelter, like, as an in-between. Some of the, the, like, little puppies right now are getting, like, spayed and neutered, and so if, uh, if the guy that works at the shelter needs to take one of the dogs to go to the vet, that means that there's no one there, right? So, first of all, to give him time off when he needs it, because he's, again, there very, very frequently, um, but also for the times where he can't be there and one of the other owners can't be there, they, they really rely on volunteers coming to help out. And so that's what I do. Another reason why I volunteer is just because I love the dogs. It's a lot of fun. Um, you're going to see some clips of the dogs sometime during this video. I don't know if I'm capable of actually doing like an overlay of any of it, while I'm talking about it, so you're probably just going to see a bunch of doggo clips at the end. What are you eating? Sorry, one of my foster babies is trying to eat the wall. Because, you know, that's normal. Another one of the reasons why volunteering at shelters, if it's something you're interested in doing, like why it's so important, is because that is funding for the shelter. The shelters generally can't have large staff. The more they have to pay the staff to be at the shelter, the less they can actually afford to, you know, feed the dogs and different things like that. So in that way, the time that more volunteers are able to um, spend at a shelter is less time that they need actual paid staff, which is really great. As far as other, like, funding things go, like I said earlier, like, I, I've donated to the organization. Now their, their main um, volunteer staff, they do basically um, request us to donate, to be like regular donators. Now that the shelter is up and running, they realize they just need it, but the donations they're requesting from us is quite small. It's 20 RMB a month, which is like three US dollars. It's really, it's really nothing and it's not 
<laughs> not even close to a burden. Um, so I actually think that that's really great that they're requiring us, or at least, you know, strongly suggesting that we give that small donation just to be in assistance and helping things get up and running. And again, not to reiterate myself too much, but um, if this shelter or another shelter in your city is one that you'd like to try to volunteer at, or there are rescue organizations that you'd like to um, foster from or donate to, that is totally a thing you can do. If you're living in a country where you speak the language, it's a little bit easier. Um, in China, there are some shelters that, you know, like, are run by people that speak English and some that aren't. So like finding one for me that I've been able to volunteer at obviously has been a little bit different than it would be if you're in an English speaking country. But if you're living in China um, and you're interested in learning more about um, rescue organizations, either shelters or just res rescue organizations themselves, totally let me know because uh, I, I'm part of rescue organizations in WeChat, uh, on WeChat, like through WeChat, I'm in a lot of WeChat groups for rescue both in Shenzhen, like Guangdong area, and also Chengdu since I used to live there, and I definitely could help get you in touch with uh, rescue organizations where you live because I would love for people that are interested in fostering, adopting, volunteering, donating, etc. I really hope that they can find those things. So um, yeah, more ranting and rambling about me trying to uh, get you guys involved, but that's you know, part of the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is to talk about my experience doing these things in China where I feel like it seems like it's harder um, language barrier wise, but also, you know, animal welfare is just such a different thing here that it can be, it can feel daunting to actually get involved, but it's possible, it's doable, and it's really rewarding. So on to what it's actually like to volunteer at the shelter. Man, this video is going to be longer than I expected. I am sorry about that. That is my life. I just talk too much. Working at the shelter is a lot of fun because you get to play with all the dogs. Like there are some, there are a couple dogs, like there's a retriever and a couple of the puppies that they just come up and like hug you. Like they just grab around your waist and just stay there. Like they're just like, I need pets right now. And so they just come up and like grab you around the waist and like just, you like I can just hold them and they'll just stay there for like 10 minutes. Um, you have to learn which dogs play well together and which ones don't because basically they're all you'll you'll see some of this in the videos at the end there's there's like all gates like they're all in like not tiny cages they're in like um gated cages where you let them in and out to go to the bathroom and things like that um but certain groups of dogs like these dogs only get along with this dog and these dogs don't get along you know um and so when they're getting their runaround playtime, uh, pee pee time, stuff like that, um, you have to you have to know which dogs really can be together, and also which dogs are playful and which ones aren't. Like there's this old man named George, uh, like old dog, and he's, I think he's adorable, and like apparently he bites if you try to pick him up, but he's also like so sweet to me. Like he'll he'll go out and do his business, but then he'll like kind of run in between my legs, and like want cuddles and want like you know, like, want pets and stuff, so, like, he, he's, I think, sweet but temperamental, and a lot of these dogs are like that, um, a good number of these dogs are, like, Yulin rescues or other, like, dog meat truck rescues, so they are animals that have been tortured, really sick, nearly dead, and were on the, their way to being eaten when they were rescued, so it's, like, a very, uh, complex situation, and most of the dogs have experienced some trauma in their lives, um, so, like, now a lot of them, most of them are quite, quite friendly, but, um, understandably some of them, at, at first, at least, were very wary of humans. Now most of them, like, when I go, none of them are, like, too aggressive. Like, they play and bite, and, like, some of them just don't know how to play with a human. And, uh, but the, that's, like, the gist of what it's like for me at the shelter. It can be exhausting because you have to get the dogs in and out of their cages, and they don't necessarily like that. Some of them are pretty easy to trick in with some food um, or some treats, and some of them, if you just open their cage, they go back in once you've let them out for long enough, so it's really not too bad. Um, it's very loud, though. Sometimes they're just all barking, just all of them at once, and <laughs> that can be exhausting. And so, like, trying to calm them down and make sure that, like, they're not barking because they need something, they're just barking because there's 40 other dogs, <laughs> and it, you know, like, what else are you going to do? And the last thing is that like cleanup is a thing. So most of them are pretty 
good and like not pooping in their cages, not peeing in their cages. Uh, the puppies are obviously an exception. Um, they're still learning, but they're mostly good. Uh, and so like inside the cages, occasionally I'll have to like clean out the cages if someone's gone to the bathroom in them. Um, but mostly it's just like in the outside area where they're allowed to go to the bathroom. Um, it's just like shoveling the poop, like taking it out of that space so that they're not like running all over it um, and not eating it because some of them I have, I've, I've witnessed the dogs like start to eat their own poop because that's just sometimes what dogs do. So without further ado, here's a bunch of clips of the fun that I have at the shelter. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I am super excited to talk more about my experiences um, with animals in China. Uh, this was my video about animal shelters, but I'm going to talk again next week about fostering and my experience doing that, and you'll get to spend a little bit more time meeting Winnie and Bella, hopefully, which are the dogs that I'm currently fostering. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed.